به سبحانه وتعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر عبده وأعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده لا شيء قبله ولا شيء بعده مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وعظيمنا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وسلم أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وعبد الله ربه حتى أتاه اليقين صل اللهم وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وارض اللهم عن أزواجه وذرياته وأصحابه وأحبابه والتابعين وعنا معهم جميعا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله أنصحكم ونفسي الآثمة بتقوى الله أحثكم على وإياها على طاعته أحذركم وإياها وبال مخالفته جل وعلا ومعصيته وأستفتح بالذي هو خير أما بعد يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن العظيم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فأما الإنسان إذا مبتلاه ربه فأكرمه ونعمه فيقول ربي أكرما وأما إذا مبتلاه ربه فقدر عليه رزقه فيقول ربي أهانا كلا بل لا تكرمون اليتيم ولا تحاضون على طعام المسكين وتأكلون التراث أكلا لما وتحبون المال حبا جما كلا القرآن الكريم keep saying that إذا دكت الأرض دكا دكا وجاء ربك والملك صفا صفا وجيء يومئذ بجهنم يومئذ يتذكر الإنسان وأنا له الذكرى يقول يا ليتني يا ليتني قدمت لحياتي فيومئذ لا يعذب عذابه أحد ولا يوثق وثاقه أحد يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة ارجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي الآيات الكريمات there are many really the end of the surah but these ayat are a summary of life القرآن الكريم summarizes it in few ayat but very very effectively profoundly and distinctively clear. Let's go through the general meaning of the ayahs and then we'll try to touch on some of the meanings Allah Azza wa Jal said. Allah Al-Azim, Al-Kareem, Al-Rahman, Al-Rahim said, فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانِ As for the human being, إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ If his Lord tests him. ابْتِلَا Testing. Tests him how? إذا ما بتلاه ربه فأكرمه ونعمه he honors him and he makes him drown in Allah's favors pouring upon him نعمة after نعمة ها يعني is is having a house نعمة or not just just having a house I'm not saying how big the house is just having a house that's نعمة there are many people who don't have Things we take for granted, huh? Just quickly, Annie. A fridge filled with food? Two fridges? 
Sayyidah Aisha al Mu'mineen says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the house of the prophetic household, there would be the one month and the two months, and the third month comes, and there's only water and some dates in the household. Ni'mah. Many, many things, yani. Safety. Family. Family. Ni'mah. Lots of people are deprived from it. Ni'mah. Just ni'mah. Iman, the biggest ni'mah that Allah opened for you to wait to know Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ni'mah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ni'mah. Ni'matun uzma. Sallallahu. Laqad manna Allahu ala al-mu'mineen. Ith ba'atha fihim rasulan. Ni'mah. Many, many ni'mahs. Allah azza wa jal says, <clears throat> the, the ability to buy something tomorrow, the ability to buy something today. You, I don't know the, the elderly amongst you know. I am sure. Especially the immigrant elderly. I'm not saying they're different from the locals. The locals who are poor are also the same. But the immigrants mainly come from deprived economic places. Not that best. Here, this country has been well, alhamdulillah, for some time now. But I remember when my, my father, rahmatullah, did not have expenses for the next day. Not for the next week or the next month. The next day. All right, alhamdulillah, we have something, but... What are we going to do about next week's uh, meal? Because the meals used to be once a week or maximum twice a week, if you remember, right? Those of you who are older remember twice a week, maybe. And not, not every day something new. <laughs> the meal is for three days or so, uh, three and a half days maybe, and then after that, then you renew. What? فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا The Qur'an al-Kareem reminds because the Qur'an puts shukr versus kufr. مَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ نَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ Notice puts shukr versus kufr. Either the human being is thankful or in the state of kufr, meaning of denial. فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبًا Which of the favors of your Lord you deny? If the ayahs that we're talking about here, فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ The human being, if Allah, فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ فَإِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبَّهُ When his Lord tests him and gives him and makes him swim in the favors of his Lord, فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا My Lord is honoring me. That's what the human being says. The Quran says. Next picture. وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَا بَتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ And the human being, if his Lord tests him, so first is test, second is test, فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَ And he makes his risk reduced. A bit tough to get. فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَهَانًا The human being says, my Lord is dishonoring me, is abandoning me. Right? And notice though, when Allah gives, Allah is calling it ibtil, ibtala, a testing. When Allah takes, He's still calling it testing. It's testing both ways. So in this, then the Quran comes and says, kalla. No, no. What you're saying, whatever the human being saying, Allah honored me, Allah just honored me, that's not really true. You got the wrong understanding. Kalla. Balla tut'imuna. Balla tut'imun yati. وَلَا تَحَاضُّونَ عَفُوا وَلَا كَلَّا بَلَّا تُكْرِمُونَ الْيَتِينَ وَلَا تَحُضُّونَ عَلَى طَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينَ And Quran al-Kareem says, no, let me correct your understandings. As if the Quran is saying, the understanding of people regarding sa'ada or happiness is this. If Allah gives you, that means two things. You are happy and Allah is happy with, pleased with you. And if Allah does not give you, it means you are unhappy and Allah is displeased with you. 
Kalla. No. <laughs> no, that's not how it is. Because the world, everybody is looking for happiness. People, I mean, from the beginning of the creation, people were looking for happiness. In every faith system, people look for happiness. In every country, now you have list of countries who are the most happy, supposedly, on the face of the earth. I don't know how you can check that. It would be nice to see if there's a thermometer for happiness. Today, 70%, tomorrow, 60 After that, 40 uh, you know, I don't know it anyway. Okay, khair, inshallah. Uh, Al Quran Karim says that the measurement, mi'yar al saada, the measurement of happiness, is not whether Allah gives you or deprives deprives you. Both of them are ibtila. Both of them are tests from Allah. If He gives you the test and if He takes from you the test, that's number one. Number two, whether He gives you or deprives you doesn't mean He's pleased with you. He could give the one He is displeased with like Pharaoh and Qarun, and he could take from the one who he loves, like Musa or Harun. There's no problem. Yeah, Allah did not give Musa and Harun the power or the money, but he gave the power and the money to Pharaoh and Harun, for example, right? So Al-Quran Karim comes and says, Kalla, no, this understanding of you is wrong about happiness. You will not necessarily gain happiness if you have more, nor does that is that indicative of Allah's pleasure upon you. Nor does it mean if you have less that Allah has displeased with you or that you don't have means for happiness. That has nothing to do with that. In our constitution here in the good old US of A, we have the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Because the, the, the founding fathers, they figured, you know, it's important. One of them, why do people live? if there is no happiness. What's the point? So when there is happiness and there is suicide rates and all these things, it seems there's contradiction. Like in Quran Karim is telling us that happiness is not what you really think. No, no. But indeed, you people don't honor the orphans. What does this have to do with happiness? And you do not try to actually help the needy and the poor and give them food. Well, yani if you honor the yatim, the orphan, is that, does that bring him happiness? Yeah, it brings him happiness. Should that also bring you happiness? Al Quran Karim is implying that, yeah. As if Al Quran Karim is implying. If you do good, then you will reap happiness. That's the only way you will get sa'ada, if you do good. But if you don't do good and you possess all the goods, it may never yield happiness and sa'ada. Not in the dunya, nor in the akhirah. You do not honor the orphans. Do not help them. وَلَا تَحَضُّونَ عَلَىٰ طَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينَ And you do not collect and actually feed the needy. Not only that. وَتَأْكُلُونَ التُّرَاثَ كَلَّا بَلْ تُكْرِمُونَ الْيَتِينَ لَا تَكْرِمُونَ الْيَتِينَ وَلَا تَحَضُّونَ عَلَىٰ طَعَامِ وَتَأْكُلُونَ التُّرَاثَ أَكْلًا لَمَّا And you eat the inheritance and the legacies of others. You devour them. Anything comes your way, you want to devour. وَتُحِبُّونَ الْمَالَ حُبًّا جَمَّا And your love for money is just jamma. It is excessive. Because you still think it gives you the sa'ada happiness. Allah says, كَلَّا إِذَا دُكَّتِ الْأَرْضُ دَكَّنْ دَكَّا But no, your understanding of how life will unfold is wrong. There will be a day when earth will be now destabilized. دكت الأرض دكا دكا وجاء ربك والملك صفا صفا and the time for the angels and the soldiers of your Lord to come and hold you to account وجاء يوم إذن بجهنم and then جهنم will also be presented at that day يوم إذن يتذكر الإنسان only that day the human will remember what the prophets have told him before. Hey, man, if you do wrong, 
there is going to be serious accountability for it. Allah says, Yawma idhan, when they see Jahannam in front of them, Oof, Yawma idhan yatadhakkaru al-insan. At that point, the human being will remember, Allah says, Wa anna lahu dhikra That remembrance will never benefit anymore. Fayawma idhan la yu'adhabu adhabahu ahad. At that time, no one will be tormented like them. And no one will be chained like them. They're chained to all the evil they've done. Then the Quran removes this picture or moves from this picture to the one who, the wise. Oh, whose nafs has been always stable with Iman, realizes. Listen to the wisdom of the prophets, of the wise. يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة ارجعي إلى ربك. There's no torment for you now. You've done well. Come, return back to your Lord. راضية مرضية. Pleased and you are pleasing. فدخلي في عبادي. Enter amongst my worshippers and my slaves. ودخلي جنتي. And enter the everlasting abode of life. This is a picture roughly, I know I took a little bit more than I wanted to, but anyway, it's the picture of what these ayat say. The reason I'm saying that is because in every era, not just in this postmodern era, but in every era, people come with new sets of values. Yani the human attempt, or let me not say the attempt, the human arrogance based on ignorance to think that they're God. The arrogance gets to people to the point that they not only just deny, deny God, deny the creator of all, but to think that they are the ones didn't. And you know, this has happened before. When Namrudu Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, right? Ibrahim alayhi salam, when Namrud, the tyrant in his time, huh? And Ibrahim tells him, Anna, Qala Rabbi yuhiyu wa yumeet. My Lord gives lives and death. And Namrud tells him, Anna, uh, I am the Sultan, I am the king here. I give life and death. Here, he brought two people. Both of you are sentenced to death. Go kill them. Before they kill him, he says, All right. One of you, you are pardoned. The other, kill him. He says, See, this one, both of them were going to die. I gave life to one, death to one. <laughs> hmm? This is the mantiq. Ibrahim says, قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْتِي بِالشَّمْسِ مِنَ الْمَشْرِقِ فَأْتِي بِهَا مِنَ الْمَغْرِبِ My Lord brings the sun from the east. Why don't you just bring it from the west now? Like in, throughout history, this is what human beings, small minds, they always say half, half knowledge is dangerous. <laughs> our, our contemporary sim, uh, syndrome learning buzzwords and a couple of things. Association here, association there. Half knowledge is very dangerous. Half wisdom, half truth is usually no truth. And half wisdom will only take you down. So, people throughout history, they thought that they can do this. And they bring new things. They want people to worship them and their theories not the creator of all and his revelations. It's the idea. So they bring new things and they tell you this is the right thing. Many, many values. You don't need to listen to the wisdom on this earth for the past 6,000 years and all the wise and all the good people from uh, Adam to Noah to Abraham, Abraham to Moses to Jesus to Muhammad, all those 6,000 years, they all, astaghfirullah, they, they say names, right? This is a new value, the real thing. This is the wisdom, untrialed, a road unpaved. Take this, because this is what's normal and this is what's right. 6,000 years of values, who messengers, who prophets, who uh, messengers of God and prophets from God, all that doesn't, all that old wisdom is not really wisdom, it's all crazy stuff. And you got to you got to ask yourself, I mean, who's the crazy one here? Who's really the insane? 
the one who follows a well-paved well road that has been walked by billions of human beings that led them to live happy and pass on happy or live by something unknown and untrialed. And uh, the magic is pretty, the magical show is pretty good, Yanni, in the sense of the presentation. Pharaoh had the best magical show. <laughs> I mean, if you're looking for a magic, look no further. Pharaoh brought the best magic before Moses, Musa alayhi salatu Right? Anyway. So, among these things is they take the most, one of the most important things people look for. What is sa'ada? What is happiness? They say happiness is uh, following us rather than all your culture or family or religions or God, all that stuff. Not to equate, huh? but just they throw. follow us and then you will have happiness. This is where happiness is. Al-Qur'an al-Kareem comes and tells us different story. Tells us, فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَا بْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَا بْتَلَاهُ فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَهَانًا كَلَّا بَلْ لَا تُكْرِمُونَ الْيَتِيمُ Really, you read the source of your happiness is Iman and good deeds. عمل صالح Iman. Man amila salihan, Al Quran Karim says, Min dhakarin aw untha, Allah says. Whoever, man is for whoever. And love the umum and al fadl umum man in the Arabic language, which means anyone, regardless, you could be short or tall, rich or poor, ugly or beautiful, a powerful or weak, regardless who you are. Man amila salihan, whoever does good. Allah says, مِن ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى Whether male or female. وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ After they have Iman. فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاثًا طَيِّبًا We shall make them live a good life. They shall actually have طَيِّب سعادة. They will have the happiness they were looking for. وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And we shall reward them much better than what they used to do. If you're looking for happiness, Al-Quran Al-Karim says, there's two things, Iman and good deeds. Iman and good deeds. What are the good deeds? كَلَّا بَلَّا تُكْرِمُونَ الْيَتِيمُ How come you, that's why the ayah is saying that. No, but you are not honoring the orphans. What happens to the orphans? لَا تَحَضُّونَ عَلَى طَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينَ You are not trying to help the needy and the poor to eat. تَأْكُلُونَ التُّرَاثَ أَكْرًا لَمَّا You just eat anything that comes. You devour this dunya, thinking that the more you have, the more happiness it will give you. وَتُحِبُّونَ الْمَالَ حُبًّا جَمَّا And you love this money so much beyond anything else. Kalla, this is not the real way. This is not how you will get happiness. You will never attain happiness that way. Happiness is pleasure with Allah. Heart that is a tranquility. Heart that is filled with rida, pleasure. Heart that is illuminated with the nur of Allah. This life, short life, will keep going. Happiness is, as Al Quran Al Karim says, "Man uh, amila salihan min dakar." Happiness is a spouse, a wife, or a spouse that receives her husband or the spouse with a smile and a good word. Simple stuff. That's happiness. Happiness is what Sayyiduna Ismail, or Sayyiduna Ibrahim, or Hajar that we've talked about in Eid were doing. The struggle that Sayyiduna Ibrahim did, the struggle that our mother Hajar did, and the struggle and the righteousness of our father Ismail, and how he treated his mother, and how he treated his father, and how he treated his Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the life that he lived in. So he inherited the leadership of the ummah because of the struggle and his sidq. صادق الوعد وكان رسول النبي he was صادق with Allah and صادق with the creation of Allah. Happiness is there. That's why Allah is bringing us the example of Ibrahim and Ismail. Happiness is a student who is studying for their exams at night, spending the night studying, not cramming, spending the night studying as they've been studying. And as they are studying at night, not sleeping, 
their parents are actually reading Quran and making dua for them to pass and do good. And when the morning comes after salah, that student kisses the father's and the mother's hand and asks them for dua as he bids to farewell to go take the exam and they cover him and, or her and pour him with their dua. The pleasure of Allah is right there. Happiness is right there. Happiness is a laborer who does a good job, works hard the whole day to earn a halal living that he brings at the end of the day home to share with his children and family. Happiness is an engineer and a physician who does a good job so Allah runs good things on their hands. One by healing the slaves of Allah and the other by constructing good things for the benefit of humanity. Happiness is the sinner who found Allah and went to repentance and stayed up the night weeping for their sins and promising Allah genuinely that they would never ever do that again. Happiness is an orphan you take care of and a miskin that you actually feed, a needy person that you feed and a smile that you draw on the face of the oppressed and a help and support to them. If you're looking to draw happiness from other things, as if the Quran is saying, you're not really looking at the right thing. Having more or less is never an indication of Allah's pleasure. Now you're supposed to have more and do more if you can. If Allah gave you the mental abilities and the intellectual capacities and the circumstance and you fail to do in all that, Allah will definitely account you for it because that's called waste. What's the most precious thing Allah gave us after Iman? Time, which is never recoverable. You will never be able to recover a moment you lost wasting it. You will be will we be accounted for time waste? Of course we will be. Of course. Does that mean you cannot have any downtime? You can have down positive time. You don't have to work 24 hours. But you should not waste. You don't have the luxury of wasting. Wasting is for failures and those who betray Allah's promise that they've given him that we will uphold. Sa'ada is when you positively, happiness is when you positively contribute. Happiness is when you do a good deed. You come to Salatul Maghrib, or Salatul Isha, or Salatul Eid. Happiness is when you go like right, the pilgrimage right now, they are in Mina throwing, pelting the shaitan that they see and the shaitan that they don't see. Happiness is when you do something good and make a difference. Happiness is when you accomplish something great. Happiness is seeing the face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَجْهُكَ الْمَأْمُولُ حُجَّتُنَا يَوْمَ يَأْتِي النَّاسُ بِالْحُجَّجِ Ya Rasulullah Your honorable illuminated face is our evidence. When people bring their evidences in the Day of Judgment, your face is our evidence, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna qalban anta sakinuhu ghayru muhtajan ila suruji. A heart where you live in, ya Rasulullah, does not need any lights. Sa'ad, happiness. We're talking about happiness, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٍ فَلَا نُحْيِيَنَّ فَلَا نُحْيَى مِنْ is شرط that شرط in the Arabic language conditional sentence here فَأَنِيْوَنْ who does يعني it doesn't you don't need to be poor so Allah gives you if you do good whether you're poor or rich and if you do good Allah will give you that's the point it's not the quantity of this dunya, it's the quality of happiness Allah Azza wa gives you. Happiness is that young man that Al-Bukhari, we talked about it, Al-Bukhari, Fisayat Al-Eid, the young man who stood in front of his parents the whole night with the mug 
of milk from the goat that he used to always give them before they go to sleep and that night he came late so he remained in front of them sitting not sleeping while they're sleeping the whole night when they woke up he gave them that yogurt or that milk to drink happiness is right there happiness is saying a good word saying good words to people not saying foul language and evil words that's not happiness happiness is not being rude Al-Qur'an Kareem wa Sunnah Sharifa tells us مَثَلُ كَلِمَةً طَيِّبَ كَشَجَرَةً طَيِّبَ The example of a good word is like a good tree. ثَمَّ السَّعَادَةً That's where happiness is. Not فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَمَهُ يَقُولُ رَبِّ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّ أَكْرَمًا Not necessarily Allah honored you in that sense if He gives you. Because He gave Pharaoh, Qarun, etc. As if Al-Quran is telling us, happiness is not in these material things. Happiness in the good things that you give. The more you give, the happier you live. The more, the better you are, the more you share that good. The more selfless you are, the more you live. The more selfish, the more you withhold from yourself. Today, in this midst of waves of uh, of, of values that are seeking to replace ancient wisdoms, not just faith systems, ancient wisdoms to tell them happiness is what we're telling you, believe it. And ancient wisdoms are there saying, look, this is a path that's, well, that's well traveled. This is the path of the believers. This is the path of those who have done well. This is the path of those who have succeeded. And let's show you the path of those who did not succeed. Those who have gone against huh, what Allah Azza wa Jal asked. Because why was the Quran revealed? It makes you, to make you. The whole purpose of the Quran, the Injil, the, the Bible, the Torah, the Torah is the sa'adah, the happiness of the human being. When you, when Allah Azza wa Jal says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa ma khalaqtu al-jinna wal-insa illa liya'budun. I have created the jinn and ins so they can worship me. What do you think it means? Wa ma khalaqtu al-jinna wal-insa illa liya'sudu yasadu bi'ibadati. Except that they attain happiness by worshiping me by following my instructions. That's where their happiness is. That's why I created them. وَلِذَلِكَ خَلَقَهُمْ al Quran says. That's why they were created. So they attained that happiness and fulfillment and maximization of their potential through following the instructions that I have revealed for them. I am the creator. Yani as of the Quran is saying, He's the creator of all. He knows the roadmap to happiness and to perfection. There it is. Don't go into a maze where you lose not just your iman and also your life and the opportunities Allah gave us. Alhamdulillah, hamdan kathiran kama amar. Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Irghaman liman jahada bihi wa kafar. Ashadu anna sayyidana muhammadan. صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم الشفيع المشفع في المحشر صل اللهم عليه وعلى آله الفقه والنظر والعلم والأثر وعلى من بآثاره مقتفى واهتدى واعتبر عباد الله اتقوا الله العظيم حق تقوى راقبوه مراقبة من يعلم ويعتقد بأنه يرى تزودوا من دنياكم لآخرتكم عملا يحبه ويرضى اعلموا أنه لا يضر وينفع ويصل ويقطع ويعطي ويمنع ويخفض ويرفع إلا الله اعلموا أن الله تعالى مركم بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه قال تعالى ولم يزل قائلا عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما 
اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين أعلي مولانا كلمة الحق والدين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه إليه من أراد بهم غير ذلك فهدي يا ربنا سواء السبيل آتي أنفسنا تقواها وزكيا أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اشف اللهم مرضانا وعاف مبتلانا وفك أسرانا ارحم موتانا اغفر اللهم لنا ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك يا ربنا سميع قريب مجيب للدعوات وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله أقم 